Well, it's a gorgeous day outside. We got the door open. Now it's time to get the Super Auto ready for all the boosts that we're going to be cramming into it. And what better way than to dive into the snow methanol injection stage four kit. Let's do an unboxing, talk about why methanol injection is probably my favorite mod. Stick around. Hey everybody, welcome back to the garage and today we are taking the first step to getting boost back on the Super Auto. As you know, back in the day we were running a P1SC1 head unit on there. We have now upgraded to an F1A, which is substantially bigger. Along with that upgrade though, we need to be able to control things like additional fueling, cylinder temps, uh, you know, timing, all that kind of stuff, and we're going to be able to do that thanks to the help from our sponsor, Snow Performance and Nitrous Express, by utilizing their Stage 4 Boost Cooler setup, which is just literally the most advanced controller out there. A lot of controllers uh, are just map reference where once you set a pressure, it starts injecting and then you set a high level pressure and it will progressively ramp until it hits that high level pressure. The nice thing about this unit is, is we can do that. We can do it off of load. We can do it off of RPM. We can do it off of just about a hundred different things. This is a fully uh, customizable, programmable uh, methanol injection controller. And it, as I said, it's the most advanced one out there. Leave it to the professionals over at Snow to produce such an awesome piece of equipment. We're gonna dive into it, but first let's check out the kit that we have, the Stage 4. Plus we've got some additional features that we're gonna be installing along the way. We'll talk about those. And eventually, probably not in this video, we will dive into the actual installation process. After that, we will get into the tuning process. So if you have not subscribed already, click that bell down in the corner, uh, hit the subscribe button. You don't wanna miss out on the tuning where we go through, basically, I've got a not so good tune on the truck right now from whenever I took it off boost. Uh, it runs fairly well, but it could be cleaned up. We're not gonna worry about that because we are going to be tuning for all the boosts now. And we will go through all the steps of getting the math dialed in, the VE table, the timing, and we will be doing it with methanol injection as a part of the total picture. Whenever we add methanol injection like this, we want to kind of set out our parameters before we start tuning and then keep those consistent. So we're gonna be looking at how we set it up for our particular installation. We'll be running a dual nozzle unit on this setup because we need a lot of methanol injection. I'll also be blending my own 50-50 by weight, not by volume mixture, so I can get the most bang for my buck on my methanol injection setup. The limiting factor on the direct injected motors is being the amount of fuel that the DI system can supply. The upgrade path for in, uh, the injectors and the fuel pump, very, very expensive. You can get LT1 injectors for fairly cheap. They're not gonna give you enough overhead whenever you get into a lot of boost. So this is the easier way and the, actually the more economical way. You can buy the most advanced kit out there and still be cheaper than what it is going to cost you to do all the upgrade paths. So on top of it, we get the added benefit of that cylinder cooling that comes along with methanol injection, the ability to run more boost or more timing. I mean, it is just a great innovation and technology has made it reliable, safe, and it just, I love methanol injection. I noticed uh, the last time I ran a methanol injection kit on the truck, it made a world of difference. I'm excited to see how much the expanded features of this will just improve that. So let's dive into the unboxing, check out the kit, and we'll talk about some of the important parts that you need to know whenever doing methanol injection. Okay, hopefully the overhead view is working. We'll switch to that here in a second. I've got a couple parts here that we're going to talk about before we get into the unboxing of the kit itself. One is we're going to be running the two and a half gallon cell. We're going to mount this in the truck, run the lines up front. Uh, we've got the nice stainless steel upgraded line kit. And because we are running this in the truck, we are running the solenoid upgrade. Basically what this happens is it allows you to shut off the line uh, by the pump to keep the vacuum from pulling your uh, methanol uh, uh, water mix. And basically it could do a siphon effect in some situations. So it's always a good idea, especially if you're running a lot of hose, to go ahead and do the solenoid upgrade kit. That's a little peace of mind. Uh, and then that's basically it for the extra tank. We will do a 
uh, you know, outlet, we'll go through the mounting portion of it, running all the lines up to where we end up mounting the pump. So let's check out what's in the box. What's in the box? Gwyneth Paltrow's head. Okay. Move this stuff out of the way. Here's the fun part. Oh, is there light shooting out of it? <laughs> okay, so we've got the standard size tank, uh, half a gallon or so. Nice thing about this size tank, it's pretty easy to find a spot to mount underneath the hood in the engine bay for it if you're trying to keep a compact, clean space. We're not gonna worry about that one since we got the big tank. Uh, we've got our pump and this is ugh, a heavy duty pump. Man, this is a big pump. Bigger than some of them I've seen in some of the other methanol injection kits. Has nice rubber standoffs to mitigate vibration. Uh, the nice thing about the Silverado is we don't have the uh, dual battery option on the Silverado, so we have a battery tray sitting uh, right in the front passenger side corner where this is going to mount perfectly. 300 PSI pressure extreme environment pump. Boom. Perfect. Uh, on top of it, we have the dual nozzle upgrade. As I said, we're going to be running two nozzles. Uh, the range that you run at kind of depends on how much horsepower and boost that you're looking at. Uh, they do their nozzles in milliliters, which is equivalent to CC, they're one to one. Uh, so I want to say the five nozzle, which comes with the kit generally, is somewhere around 325 to 350 CC. They have a six nozzle that's a little over 600. Uh, but since we are going to be running so much boost and, and using this as supplemental fueling, really, uh, we will be running the dual nozzle setup. So thanks to Snow for providing us with that upgrade. Uh, we've got a nice inline filter to keep uh, everything clean. Gotta, gotta have that. I know a lot of people don't run that stuff, but it's way too easy to get something uh, in your line and clog your nozzle, and then you can have an issue under boost if you're not delivering that injection. So uh, here we have our level sensor that we'll install into the tank and our other nozzle. Uh, level sensor, very important. We wanna make sure whenever we're low, so we'll install this in a way where we have some overhead. Comes with an LED so you can put it in your dash that gives you an indication of, hey, you're running low on fluid. And then there's some other features that we can do through the controller itself uh, to control things like wastegates and, and other, you know, to limit boost or cut timing if you uh, want to dive into some of the stuff like that. Uh, just uh, some various fittings to help with the installa installation. Some more stainless lines for running our kit. As you can see, it comes with a shorter setup because this is kind of designed with the small tank in mind to be ran uh, all in the engine bay. We've got the nice big spool so we can run from the back all the way to the front. Got our USB programming cable and then our wiring harness. And this is by far the most uh, intimidating methanol controller wiring harness I've ever seen. Uh, but man, I'm super excited to dive into this. On top of it, this is it. The brain module, the controller itself. We've got inputs for power and to run the pump. And then we have the harness. We've got uh, the USB port on it. We'll have to double check. This probably needs to be mounted uh, inside the vehicle would be my guess. So that being said, uh, we're going to look at some of the different options that we can run on this setup. Uh, let me go grab the manual real quick. So one of the things that you'll notice about this unit is it does not have a map sensor directly built into it. It is designed where you can run a separate map sensor or you can tee off of the existing map sensor signal. Uh, on top of it, we have the option of bringing in things like RPM. Uh, they have a nice uh, wiring diagram. I love a good wiring diagram where it shows you exactly everything that you need to know on there. So they make a map sensor or you can use the factory map sensor. There's a nice ore there to give you an idea that shows you where you need to tie in all of your powers. We're going to have a uh, power lead that's going to go directly to the battery and ground on a fuse lead. That will be then controlled through a accessory input voltage into this unit that will allow it to switch on. So this acts as the relay for the pump itself. Uh, and then the nice thing is we've just got a lot of nice harness setups here for things like the pump where it plugs directly in, uh, makes life easy. We'll loom some of this stuff up. We'll, uh, you know, use the 
uh, uninsulated uh, butt splices. I like to make good connections on this and then uh, heat shrink all of that down. Same ordeal, we'll put some nice ring terminals on the main power feed on for that and then we will dive into our actual harness installation and choose all the things that we want to tie into based off of the wiring diagram. Okay, excuse the mess, we've got some electrical that I've cut out here and not isolated yet, but we've got this nice battery tray down here that just makes the perfect spot for mounting this methanol injection pump. Uh, I've got a couple holes in here that hopefully I can reutilize and then we can run the line from the trunk right up the frame rails, bring it up right into the inlet of the pump side, and then we'll go out from the pump and we'll have our injectors, our uh, nozzles right here on our inlet tube. The big thing about this is, is if you are running mass airflow that has the temperature sensor built into it, make sure that you get a breakout harness. You want to separate the IAT out. You want to spray methanol or your methanol water mix after the MAF sensor, but you want to spray it before the IAT. That way we can see the uh, drop in IATs going into the engine. That allows us to run things like more timing. Okay, moving over to the back side of the truck, we have some options for mounting our tank. Part of it that we want to do is uh, ease of usability. I've already got a big fuel cell in the bed of the truck, so I'm inclined to mount it right back here beside the fuel cell. That way it's easy to get to just by unfolding one panel. We can top it off, uh, set it up in a way where our line goes through uh, the bed, up the side of it. We'll stretch out our line. Make sure we have plenty of length to get there wherever we mount it. The other option is maybe up in the corner over there. Uh, for no more than we'll probably have to fill up this two and a half gallon tank. It's kind of a hassle because the latch is on the driver's side of the truck to get the front panel open. But as I said, we're not gonna be filling this thing up. The smaller tank, generally you're gonna fill that up about every time you gas up your vehicle. Uh, this one we should be able to go a couple, well, and with only having a 15 gallon cell, we should probably get quite a bit out of this in comparison to filling up the gas tank. So it might be worth the loss of a little flexibility to put it up in the corner where it's out of the way. I still haul some stuff in the back of this thing every once in a while, believe it or not. Uh, probably not as much now that we've got the Jeep Gladiator, but we'll figure that out as we go. Last but not least, let's talk about our fluid. In the past, I've always ran blue washer fluid. The nice stuff about this is you can buy this for super cheap in crates or boxes, like six to a box. Uh, this is around 25 to 30% methanol blend. Make sure you're getting the blue stuff. Don't get any of the other colored stuff because it has detergents or additives in it that you do not want to inject in your system. This is basically 30% methanol water and a little bit of food dye. Since we're trying to get the most bang for our buck though, we are going to be running a 50-50 blend, as I said, and we'll be doing it by volume or weight instead of volume. And that means that methanol is lighter than water, uh, so it will take more methanol to equal the same uh, weight as the water that we put in. We're going to use the same kind of jugs, windshield washer jugs, to do our blending in, and ideally we can go in there and put some marks on the side of it, see what our levels are as we make the batch, that will help us to kind of dial in our waste. But I will be using a scale to mix mine because consistency is important. That's why beforehand I like to buy boxes of this stuff, have 12 bottles sitting around, will last me a couple years, and it's all gonna be really close in consistency because of the manufacturing process. And then on top of it, whenever you're buying boxes, uh, most of the batch there is going to be from the same blend as it's going down the conveyor line. Consistency is the big thing on water methanol. And so the thing about it is the more uh, important your system is for protection or fueling and things like that, the, the closer eye you want to keep on your blend. You can use a hydrometer or something like that to check the specific gravity if you're buying pre-mixed stuff to make sure that it is mixed properly. We're not going to get into that so much, but we will do a video on actually blending our own and that way we know exactly that we're always getting that perfect 50-50 by weight mix of methanol. So that's just the beginning. We have plenty more to dive into as we do this process. This video series is gonna probably be at least 15 videos long, start to finish. 
where we do the installation overview, the programming of the uh, control module for the stage four unit, the programming through HP tuners for the Silverado for boost as we go through mass airflow, volumetric efficiency, timing, uh, torque, all of that stuff. This is a uh, all-inclusive series, so make sure and follow along if you haven't already. I want to give another huge shout out to our sponsors, Snow Performance, Nitrous Express. Thank you guys for making this series possible. We couldn't do it without you guys. So check out the links down below. I'll put a link to this kit. There's always a link down below to Nitrous Express's website. Show them a little love. Go check out their offering out there. Uh, there's a lot of cool stuff on there. And we're going to dive into the nozzles a, a little bit later on because the nozzle design on this kit is um, just awesome. I don't see how these things are not the best flowing nozzles out there based off of the simple design philosophy of having the filter in the jet and the way that the adapter connects to that and it's just there's so much angle and volume to flow through that filter in there that it's just consistency. That's what we are focused on with methanol injection is making sure everything is consistent. Our fueling strategy, uh, our methanol mix, you know, the equipment that we're using, we need to have that consistency and we're going to find it here in this snow performance kit. So if you have any questions, go ahead and hit up the comments down below. Uh, make sure you tune in for future segments. Sorry I missed the last live show, but we do have a live show on Thursday nights at 8 Eastern where you can jump in, ask your questions about tuning, things like that. Make sure and check that out. Uh, we also do some awesome giveaways and, and things during the live show. Uh, that being said, I have work to do. You know the drill. Thanks for stopping by the garage. ABT always be tuning.